<laughs> uh, so for those of you who know us, uh, know that we have, uh, at the moment, our reload has really little to do with uh, data analysis. So you might wonder what we are doing actually here. And the answer, uh, the answer, there is not an answer, but uh, in fact, we are going to talk about uh, data analysis more as a political tool, so as a political problem. Uh, what we are going to do is introduce every road and who we are and uh, what is our goal. Then we will talk a, a little bit about how data was actually used in the past years in politics and what finally we will tell you what we want to do different, what is our vision for the future. So uh, the Agri Foundation uh, is a non-profit political organization uh, which aim is like to discuss European integration and to promote European integration. Its main publication at the moment is Arbury Road, which is uh, an online magazine, which discusses, again, uh, politics at the European level. But we don't want only to integration as such, we are not all about uh, European integration as such, but we want actually a different, better version of Europe uh, if compared to of European integration compared to the one we experienced in the last uh, 20, 30 years, I would say. And so we uh, also want to give space to uh, real day-to-day -day problems of European citizens and try to improve the daily experience of uh, people with uh, European integration. So I will jump this because, again, the, this is the wrong PowerPoint, but uh, um, we, in our study, uh, we use data, like in all our articles, this is an example, we use uh, uh, a lot of data, and uh, uh, so data, I don't think they are, you know, a scientific truth, there is always an interpretation behind data, but uh, we believe that uh, uh, this interpretation needs to be supported by data, and data is how they are uh, verifiable and then falsifiable. Uh, we also collaborate with other uh, companies, like for example, Kaizo, uh, you have heard about that, uh, and this type of collaboration, I think, is what helps us to uh, assure our readers that our information comes from re reliable sources. So, we had a mix up with the PowerPoint, so we're going back for a sec. So, library and data. Among the core beliefs of the organization, basically, is that we need a binding, effective, pan-European piece of legislation about data, about data protection. Now, a couple of years ago, we had the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, which was implemented. And as we all know, this was a big step forward. You now have to accept when you go onto websites if they're allowed to use your data. But we feel like it's not enough. My personal experience and the experience of many people I've spoken to is that you want to go onto a website, you just hit accept. You go into, oh, I'll check the options to make sure it's okay. You scroll, 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 you get lazy, you hit accept and you continue. So people don't fully understand what, what part of their data is being used, how it's being used, and who's using it, basically. So. Next thing then, this is particularly dangerous when it comes to politics. Are we all familiar with Cambridge Analytica? <laughs> Everybody? Just in case anyone isn't, very quickly. Cambridge Analytica was an analytics company, based in Cambridge, naturally, that were working with the Trump campaign, the Brexit campaign, and a whole host of other elections worldwide. Now what they did was use unethical and, in many cases, illegal methods to obtain information on voters, and to be able to build a psychological profile for these voters. Then they would say, okay, this person and this area is going to react this way to this information. Bombard the person with the information that will reinforce the ideas of their candidate so they can elicit more votes. They essentially were cheating to try and win elections. Now, next slide. The bad news is they won the election. Okay, so there's no denying their tactics were deplorable, they were unethical, they would be illegal if they were to happen now, but they were extremely effective. So what we want, and you'll notice that a lot of the, these tactics were being used by one particular side of the political world, let's say. So, while companies like Cambridge Analytica use they collect data to influence people, we want to do things slightly differently. Yeah, in fact, so we want to, uh, I'm sorry, you, you want to see. Uh -huh. That's it. Yeah, so, um, oh, okay, but who was this part? Uh, yeah, so uh, is uh, really like what we want to do. We use data to actually find people, and we want them to believe in us because they believe in our ideas and in our message, not to change their mind, not to use data to manipulate and exploit this data to manipulate their minds illegally. Uh, so in a way, it's really a way of counterattack from uh, you know, what Cambridge Analytica was doing, what this kind of uh, populist movement usually 
are doing and uh, uh, to counterattack by using these techniques, which are really effective, to put actually good scientific data in the hands of people and to communicate that effectively. Yeah, so we found that, as you're saying, companies like Cambridge Analytica, they're trying to get voters, people, general members of the population to do things for them. They're using the population to win elections. What we want to do is take this data, scientific data in particular, put it back in the hands of the population. We want politics and public policy to be what politicians can do for people as opposed to what people can do for politicians. However, at the moment we're very, very young. We've only been working for a couple of months, so we haven't branched out into this data, but it's really interesting to hear what Jose had to say. It sounds right up our street with the kind of, kind of groups we'd like to be working with. And we hope to be able to implement some of these ideas as we move forward in the future. <coughs> so, short and sweet, that's the end of us. Uh, we'd love to meet and chat with anybody who has any interest in the project, who has any suggestions, who would like to collaborate, or who just wants to get a bit more information about who we are and what we do. Thanks. Follow so us on Facebook on Arbury Road. Any questions, <laughs> yeah, send us an email, or you can also get us at Kyle at Kyle so that <laughs> uh, Oh. You said that you want to let Europe integrate, but also make Europe better. Do you want to make it better in the box kind of sense of better? Or what does better mean for you? Thank you. Really interesting question. <laughs> so, uh, like, I think what, uh, of course, we want to do is make a, a European Union is perceived right now as a really bureaucratic, uh, not human-friendly institution, which, uh, especially in Mediterranean countries, uh, I'm Italian, but I think Spain, I think we have a similar perception, caused more, almost more problems than uh, you know, benefits in the last 20 years. So it's really uh, about making, I think, a European Union more uh, friendly and more like uh, democratic in a way, like so more uh, taking care of every country. Uh, and we are discussing about many teams, which you can find in our, uh, we already have several articles on you know, arbureau.com. Uh, so we like to discuss really about teams which I think are fundamental for every country, but also for every person. Like for example, we are uh, about gender equality, uh, environment, uh, migration, migration, citizenship. young people, uh, you know, unemployment, for example, which is a massive problem across the European Union. And to solve these problems, I think we need uh, a European action. You can solve this problem at the Spanish level or at the Italian level, but you need really uh, a European response to most of these problems. Later you can. Yeah. Like, no, I totally agree like, that uh, only giving information is not sufficient. Uh, I think we need to admit that these kind of populist uh, unscientific movements were way better at communicating than what the European institution, for example, did. And that's why we, we are starting with every road, but actually soon we will start also with a, uh, um, podcasts, blogs, uh, video. So trying to experience different tools uh, which hopefully can help us to uh, actually communicate more effectively with this data and our vision. Yeah? Um, how are you going to promote your for kind of podcast for the center? Because I guess most of us are natural statics and I've seen the social dilemma. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. yeah but consider, yeah, it depends on where you live, what your interests are, that you actually can live into completely different realities. But 
as maybe people who actually do believe in a couple of ideas will never even see <coughs> our group foundation. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. And of course, you know, we just started, so at the moment, it's like people, like basically, if you look in this room, we are already Europe, no, or Europe even global, but like uh, cosmopolitan, but we are Europe, like we have different people from many different countries already, like talking to each other, understanding the benefits of the European population. So the kind of people we want to talk at the beginning is this, because it's just easier to find support from these people. The kind of population we aim to talk further on, like when the project will be more developed, is of course different, and is of course a big, uh, big challenge. I think, though, that is not impossible. I think that uh, one problem, like most of the, this kind of communication has, is that it's too academic. So there is a lot of complex messages. And uh, just take the Brexit campaign, for example. I was in, in Brexit because I was in Cambridge, actually, when it happened. And like uh, it was like, basically, the left wing was uh, about communicating this reality really complex, you know, why the European uh, Union was good in economic terms. Why the right wing had really powerful, wrong and stupid messages, but like, uh, you know, uh, return to the empire, uh, get, get control back. Uh, in, in a way, the answer to a need, I think, there is in the population of being protected. Uh, and that is where the European Union, I think, is failing. Uh, so, for example, you know, if we think about our protection as workers, as uh, even welfare, is all at the national level. Why we strongly believe that the European Union should start to develop a European answer to this problem, does communicate, and I think that is a way where, uh, with which you can uh, win back the heart, basically, of these people. So talking them about a European welfare, for example, talking them about their rights and how they are going to be protected by the European Union, but in a simple way, not talking about you know economic integration and how in the long run will... Uh, uh, I think that there is a big problem of communication and that's where uh, we're trying to act. Yeah. Actually, I would like to add a little bit to you um, on what you said. So, for example, I'm from Lithuania, and in Lithuania we just got we had, had an election for parliament, and there was quite a long history about, you know, uh, Russian uh, Russian government su su Russian, su that's why yeah, supporting, for example, Eastern European partners, which are pro-Russian to like kind of like uh, put their own people into the government. So what happened these years? Actually, there was few of the like um, YouTubers, like blogs, and etc., who started to talk a lot and analyze based on data how we are like there was several of structures um, released how we basically take money from European uh, European subs subsidies and stuff like that. And actually, in this election, because of that, uh, let's say good media, uh, like uh, basically uh, most of those parties we have lost an election. Mm -hmm. We got like much much lower amount of like spots in the government in comparison to what happened before, and I think what uh, what is like our we wrote from like my own perspective is about uh, creating the media which is not only inside every country but creating a media for more European level communication around it because we don't have it. Let's say in USA we do have like two different wings which are basically fighting There's like Fox News, uh, uh, NBC, stuff like that. And in comparison, there are other TV which are like more pro-democrat. In e uh, Europe, because we are very young in comparison to our overall uh, structure, we don't have any communication ch channel, like United Communication Channel towards the simple people. So I think this is like there, the Arbury Road is coming for and you know, by creating a lot of different communications way which are attractive to the broad <coughs> audience, that's the only way how you can reach those people. So. Yeah. Exactly. Sorry, just to answer your question as well, how you, how you like the people who say voted for Brexit kind of live. In, I think you were saying like live in this way, that how could Arbery ever even reach them? They live yeah. in these bubbles. Uh, I think that there's a wage issue, which is climate change. That basically it's kind of an issue for Arbery where uh, it affects everybody's livelihood. Like my city in Ireland used to have a flood every century. We've had five once in a century floods in the last ten years. You know, um, you see like the we call it in the USA stronger tornadoes, all this kind of stuff. You have just like basically everybody's lives getting affected by climate change. But there's not what's Spain going to do about climate change on its own? You know, um, and then there's only as Europe and then larger international groups can you actually affect change. 
Same with coronavirus. It's simply not something that one country can do. Um, if you have, say, kind of the backward slide in democracy and the rise of nationalism, again, I think it's internationalism is the only kind of labor internationalism is the only thing that can po possibly solve this. Thing. That's I think, that, I think people understand that. Like you see Bernie Sanders and AOC in mm -hmm. the US, and you see Jeremy Corbyn in the UK. And I think if you make the message properly, you can get.